Hi, everyone. I want to welcome you to this super de duper exciting Facebook Live. While I have a second here, um, I'm just going to give everyone a minute to hop on. Um, I'm going to share this before we get going here so that lots of people can find us because I know that a lot of people wanted to make sure that they could find us tonight because we have a very special guest coming on our page tonight. Tonight we have Dr. Kristen Donnelly and she is one of those people that when you meet her, you're just like, I want her to be my friend. That's how I felt like the first time I saw her go live. Um, the first time I met her like on a coffee chat, I just, I'm such a, such a huge fan of hers and I'm so thankful. Um, she was sharing, uh, how she has this heart for hospitality and I'm just, I'm such a fan. You guys know I'm a fan of hospitality. And, um, when I found out that she was, um, you know, just a, a fan of hospitality and you know she has this background in this incredible what she calls radical hospitality of the Irish I could not wait to bring her in um so while I'm waiting for her to come here I want to share with you just a couple um hi Carrie thank you so much for joining us um I wanted to share with you guys a couple thoughts that I have on hospitality while we're waiting um one of the things that I absolutely love is how when we invite someone into our home, we are saying that you are important enough to me that I will bring you into my space, that I will feed you my food, that I will share my heart with you, I will share my love with you. And I just think that is so incredible. It gives people dignity. It gives people um, a source of love unlike any kind of other place. Um, and I just, I just, uh, I really encourage you to think about um, how hospitality also takes us to a new level of courage. Um, so many of us like to live in our own little boxes right now. And we don't really make a lot of time for other people. And I have this sign hanging above my desk in the other room. And it says that cozy is the new grand. And I think about that when we are trying to fit 25 or 30 people <laughs> in our house. Um, so I just, I really want to encourage you guys that whether you think your house is too small or you don't have enough money, whatever excuse you have, um, let's fight against those. So, uh, Dana, thank you so much. I, um, I've had a big day, a lot of camera time today. I recorded a commercial with Jamie today. <laughs> I did a lot of Facebook lives. I did a speed networking event with Carrie today. So I actually did my makeup. I put on my red lipstick. So, <laughs> so yes, it's very exciting. Um, yeah, so we have all kinds of, oh, there we go. We've got Jill here smiling. I love it. There's so many exciting things going on. Um, I know that Kristen has a lot going on in her family, so she's not here quite yet, I don't think. Kristen, are you here? Do we think that Kristen's here yet? I don't see her. Um, oh, I think she's going to be coming. But while we're waiting for her to hop on, I want to share one more thing with you. And that is something that's going to be coming up um, that we are going to be focusing on here in um, the Encourage Living business page this um, the next month in April. And oh, I think Kristen is actually coming on here. Kristen, are you here? Yay! Kristen is here. All right. Let me see if I can figure out how to bring you on camera. I'm going to go ahead and click you on here. Hmm. Guys, did you see that? Kristen called me pedal. Isn't that the sweetest? Guys, she is so sweet. Um, 
I'm not sure. I'm having Kristen, you're on your phone, correct? You guys, I love this. There's so many of you here. This is so exciting. Um, Hmm. Let's see here. I'm just kind of learning. You know, sometimes we have to be flexible with these this technology stuff. You live and you learn, right? Hmm. Let's see here. Okay. I do this again. Kristen, are you able to request to be on in my, I'm going to go ahead and allow requests. And if, do you want to see if you can request to be in the, in the pop, in the live? Will it allow you to do that? Because it's not allowing me to add you in for some reason. Okay, so I'm going to swipe the screen. Thank you, Carrie. And it's not showing her as a live viewer for some reason. Because I've done this before and it's it's just uh, not cooperating with me very well. There we go. Carrie Sharp is an absolute amazing help, you guys. There we go. So while Kristen is adding, I'd like to introduce you to her. Um, this is, hello, Kristen. Hi. So guys, just so you know, Kristen just joined us and she is Dr. Kristen Donnelly and she is the executive vice president and the founder of Abbey Research, right? Yes, I said that correctly? Yes. And um, she helps organizations investigate their culture and individuals lead with intention, which I love that because I'm all about intentional living. Um, she wears a lot of other hats as well, but one of her favorites is a personal cheerleader to many other incredible women. She and her husband, John, met in Belfast, which is in Ireland, and now they live outside of Philadelphia, where they hope one day to get a dog, which I think is so awesome. What kind of dog would you like? Um, I probably, I mean, the size of our house, we probably need a beagle. I would love a big lab. I grew up with labs. Um, but, well, I don't know. We'll see whatever. Um, it'll be a rescue puppy. So we'll see whoever we bond with whenever we go. Oh. Awesome. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, so, Kristen, can you tell us a little bit about what your day-to-day -day life is like at Abbey Research? <laughs> yes, I'd love to. I don't really have day-to-day. -day. Um, <laughs> one of the beautiful things about my job is that Abbey Research is a division of my larger family company, um, of which I'm the COO of the whole network. And so my day at Abbey Research could be a great phone chat, coffee chat with somebody about leadership and then hopping on a... Um, conference call for two hours about the legal definition of soil for one of our other companies. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I am, um, and Carrie, I don't like green beer. Stop antagonizing me. We have had this conversation. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, but um, I, um, I have to be really flexible in both my brain space and in my um, extroversion and in my leadership because in the span of you know, an eight hour day, I could be in like five or six different roles mm -hmm. with anywhere from, you know, the two, like two people to like 900. Um, and it could be a government, wow. agency, it could be, um, you know, it could be a, a customer who I'll never meet in person, but I'll just meet, um, you know, like online. So one of the things that I really love is making sure that I can take a little bit of time every day to connect with people like you, Sarah, um, <laughs> are, um, being bold 
bold and brave and helping um, not only themselves live intentionally and fiercely, but helping those around them do the same. So, Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you. And I have to say, when I met Kristen, we met over a coffee chat. So we've actually never had, a, had the privilege of meeting in person yet. But um, one of the things she shared with me is that that she loves to be hospitable even over the internet, which was so true. I can see that. And uh, I think it, it takes a very special person to make you just feel so welcome in a internet chat room. And you do that so well. Um, I just, yeah. And uh, you guys, I can't stress this enough. Like when I first started watching Kristen's lives and things like that, I was like, I want to go to Philadelphia and just hang out with her. Like, Please come. <laughs> Yes, I love it. So um, why do you think hospitality? Well, let's back up a little bit. You, um, what, first, what first intrigued me is when um, Carrie, who is, who is watching here with us, we both, um, we both spend a lot of time in Carrie's Facebook group because we are communicators. We like to communicate. Oh, Carrie, thank you. She's a fan of us, Kristen. What? Stop <laughs> it. Mutual admiration <laughs> society here, lady. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Um, I think I'm blushing, <laughs> but anyways, um, seriously, Carrie, you just made me blush. Cause I can't believe that Carrie Sharp just said she's a fan of me. That's crazy. <laughs> but, um, anyways, uh, I remember you had said something about you wanted to share your thoughts, like when it came to St. Patrick's Day and the concept of radical hospitality. So do you want to share a little bit about your time in Ireland and, and how this whole concept of radical hospitality came about? Are you interested in sharing a little bit about that? Sure. Um, so first of all, just on a, a point that is very, very important to a lot of people, I never actually lived in the Republic of Ireland. Um, I lived on the island of Ireland and in the north of Ireland, which is, for some people, not a separate entity at all, but legally and very importantly for a lot of other people, a very separate entity. Um, and so, because my, my visas were through the UK government, I paid for things in pounds, um, all that kind of stuff. I was definitively in Northern Ireland. And I know some of my mates from there are popping on Jim and Owen, I see you guys. Um, and I met them, and Arthur, hi. And... Um, I am, um, those lads especially are very, very passionate about this difference. And so I want to be very, very clear that I've never had the privilege of living in a republic. I'm so glad you shared that because I, I just learned something new. I would have not even known the difference. So thank you so much for sharing that. You are welcome. It's been yes. two countries, well, legally since the 19, since like 1920. Um, so okay. we can have a whole other conversation about that later. But um, the first time that I lived there, I worked as a sex ed teacher, actually. And um, I, I love work. it. <laughs> I did some. That's work kind work. of one of my dream jobs. I'm not even joking. Like, oh my, God, it was my so friends cool. always say that when it comes time for the talk, that I'm the one that's going to give it to their kids. And I'm like, yes, I'll do it. <laughs> I always tell people I'm not, I can't, after that job, like one of the nights I was the, like one of the only women in a, um, oh, Jill County Antrim, that's where I lived. And um, tell me where, where your family's from in County Antrim, because one of my best friends is from Valley Castle. Um, and, um, oh, thank you, Pauline. Um, so the, uh, I, I can't get scared of anything ever because I was once the only room in a woman in a room of like 30, 15 year old boys. And I had to talk to them about masturbation. So oh, if you, can that, you can survive it. That would be yes. <laughs> so, when I became really passionate about St. Patrick's day. So I'm not Irish American. Um, and I have no connection to the Island. Really. I moved there cause I spun a globe in a bookstore and decided to take a job. Literally. I'm not, I love right. it. Um, and so my first St. Patrick's Day was um, spent, I got an invitation to spend it at the Downpatrick Cathedral, which is the traditional burial place of St. Patrick, and the Church of Ireland's um, kind of vigil service that day. And I knew nothing about St. Patrick. I knew nothing about the day. All I knew were the stereotypes of Irish America. Um, and at that point in time, Belfast had a parade, but like not really. And what I was told constantly was that um, like St. Patrick's Day wasn't a big deal in Northern Ireland. And it was only a big deal in Dublin because they made money off Americans. coming. Um, and so 
I that so that first so that first St. Patrick's Day I got to go to Down Patrick, like I said. And the rector that was speaking gave a sermon on St. Patrick being a truly the um patron saint of Ireland because he is the ultimate example of, of radical hospitality. Mm-hmm. I, was, I mean he was a slave, he was brought over originally as a slave. And then that he chose to come back because God called him, and then he brought Christianity to Ireland as an example of hospitality, and just welcomed him to the Irish bar. Welcome to Ireland. Um, are you getting that static on your end? Or is it- um, you were just breaking up a little bit, yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to say the, the, the narrative spin is that St. Patrick is an example of how incredibly hospitable the Irish are because they mm-hmm. welcomed an outsider in and then he, you know, taught them how, the, the faith of welcoming the outsider full stop. That's kind of the spin. Um, and then, um, Jim, do you have it now? I'm seeing that some folks are losing sound. I know the internet is both beautiful and a curse at the same time. <laughs> um, I'm definitely hearing you better now than I was. I'm not sure about Jim, but I know I'm hearing you much better than I was. Great. Um, fab, Jim. Um, so, um, I, I moved after that year, my whole relationship with the idea of St. Patrick really, and St. Patrick's Day, and what it could mean to people was really radically altered. Like, I understand that for some people, it is a it is a, a day to get completely drunk and um, celebrate their idea of what being Irish means. And it involves a lot of music and it involves a lot of things. In my five St. Patrick's Days on the island, um, I went to one parade and it was in Galway. And it involved a whole lot more people like what you would think of in a Memorial Day parade or a 4-H club parade, like leading their pet goats, than it did (laughs) leprechauns. Um, And my five St. Patrick's Days always involved food, family, and hospitality. Always. Certainly whiskey. Mm. Certainly Guinness. Um, The best food (laughs) you will ever have in your damn life. Um, There's a whole lot more about this idea of... um, in the ways that I experienced it, it was a lot more about making sure the table was big enough for everybody. Um, yes. That is one narrative of St. Patrick's Day, but it is the narrative that gets lost, especially here in the United States. And my husband, who is a, who is a, a lad of Count Tyrone, um, has a really hard time with how Americans talk about St. Patrick's Day. And they have really something again I don't know what the problem is um he really really struggles with the stereotypes and the jokes and people asking him to say Aaron Gobra in his accent and making lucky charms jokes because this is for him a very important day um to understand family to celebrate family and to do hospitality um and to drink to the health of your year and to drink to the to the health of the whatever and if he was if he was here he'd be able to tell you in like really detailed how incredibly important this is to him but i as somebody who lived there and saw a different narrative and now is fiercely protective of yes of my husband um i just always try to encourage people to view this day diversely um and that it can yeah. mean different things to different people it's not just a hallmark holiday it's not a time to, um, you know, there are some people, especially um, especially Irish folks living here in America, who think that some of the jokes around it are even racist. Like, they'll get, they'll get kind of honest about uh-huh. that. Um, and it's very difficult to be, for a culture that you hold as your true identity, to be mocked as an alcoholic joke. Oh, yeah. And so I, um, so this time of year, I'm always really will, I'm always encouraging people to think through that it is a day that is rich with history and rich with meaning. And one of those meanings is hospitality. I love it. I absolutely love it. Now, do you think, um, do you think that, (laughs) do you think that um, a close like parallel would be, and obviously the meanings aren't exactly the same, but it just seems very similar to me like how, like for, for me, Thanksgiving for me is, is opening my door and saying, Hey, there's always room. Even if you're my cranky old neighbor, <laughs> it was yeah. so mean to me, you know, like there's, there's always room next door. So is Absolutely. that, is that sort of similar? 
And I think yes. just okay, like good. that, just like that day is complicated too by the narratives that we've been told versus the truths. St. Patrick's Day is complicated yes. because of the narratives versus the truths. But yes, I would say that the theme of food and family and I mean, rest as well. St. Patrick's Day is a national holiday in both the North and the South of Ireland. So you get the day mm -hmm. off from work. Um, not everybody, of course, we have lots and lots of people that never get days off like that. My mother-in-law is an in-home carer. And so I don't, don't believe this year she has off, even though it's a Saturday. Um, so um, lots and lots of people work very hard, even on hospitable holidays to keep the rest mm -hmm. of our society running. Um, but yeah, I would say it's a, it's a decent, a decent um, similarity to uh, Thanksgiving, you know, just that the food is more seafood based than uh, turkey based. All right, great. Yeah. Um, so I guess my question is, when you were living in Northern Ireland, do you have a specific moment that stuck out in your head of a time when someone was demonstrating that hospitality to you? Oh my gosh. I don't know how to limit it. Um, the, the, my first year that I was living there, the story I always tell is that um, I was making small talk after church one Sunday and kind of complaining that I didn't have a tumble dryer and I didn't know how long mm -hmm. it took my clothes to dry on the radiators. But that was, a, that was something that was stressful to me. Um, I was being a whiny American um, and I was, um, had no idea really what I was saying. And the next day they showed up at the nonprofit I was working at and there was a guy with a truck who said I had a tumble dryer in my extra tumble dryer in my garage. Is it okay if I go into your house and hook it up? Oh, that's um, beautiful. We had a Christmas tree show up in our yard, um, when I was living there because they knew that the other girl that I was living with, we were two students. We didn't have the money to buy a Christmas tree. So the village made sure mm -hmm. we had one. Um, I have eaten dinners at more kitchen, at more dining room tables. I have spent the nights in more people's homes. Um, but even more than that, for me as a researcher, as an American, I went over to do my PhD the second time I went. What I was honored with so much was people's stories and people's lives. Um, Pauline, you are an incredibly hospitable bunch. I love Northern Ireland. I miss it every single day. Mm -hmm. um, and Jim, I'm so glad I could help. Let's talk about this further if you want, because um, you're wiser in this than I am. Um, but... I, you know, Northern Ireland especially is such a, a place of, cult, as a, a place of, uh, for many, many people, a very traumatic existence for a long, long time. And the idea that they would still throw open their doors and say, right, like, here you are, um, was always very humbling to me. Um, and I was always very grateful. I mean, down to like, you'll never, ever meet a stranger in a Belfast pub. If you are an introvert, do not try to go drinking on a Saturday night in Belfast with an American accent because you will make it, you will make 400 friends in about seven seconds. Um, oh my goodness. That sounds I like a dream that. come true to me. <laughs> I mean, I, like, there were so many nights where like we would finish drinking at two, three o'clock in the morning and like it felt very natural to go back to people's living rooms and sit around and continue the conversation. And I had never met oh. them before and I've never seen them since. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. But it just, it, br it bred it. It just, it just breathes it in a really, really lovely way. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm being, I'm going to be disingenuous to say that there are not major problems with othering and boundaries, especially in the North. It's a really complicated conversation and that my privilege as an American opened a lot more doors for me than for instance, in some neighborhoods, the door was open to me, but not necessarily my very Catholic husband mm. and my very nationalist identity husband. And that's a very complicated conversation, but because we do have folks from uh, the North and the South of Ireland on the conversation here tonight, um, I want to say, um, I want to say that I acknowledge that. Um, and then Jim just asked if I could say more about radical and radical hospitality. So Sarah, is it okay if I talk about that? Can I transition to that? Absolutely. Go for it. Go for it. I always think of hospitality as a biblical directive. Um, just for me, I'm personally, I'm a person of faith, um, a person specifically of Protestant faith. And hospitality is one of the things that I believe as a person of that faith, I am called to. And hospitality in a certain way can be talked about, I think sometimes in the same way that we talk about like politeness, like as long as you are civil to people, like being hospitable can be offering your home in a time of crisis for people or being hospitable could be being the 400th person that bakes the casserole for someone after their mom died. Radical hospitality for me is a whole lot more about personal vulnerability 
um, in that understanding that my, while still respecting my boundaries and prioritizing my energy and my life, my home is not just mine. My home belongs uh -huh. to everybody who needs a home. My yes. life belongs to people who need a life. Um, my, uh, my entire self is not here and does not exist entirely for me. Uh, and so therefore my privilege, my home, my car, my food, my disposable income also are, um, available to the greater good. So radical hospitality for me means that, um, I don't care how clean my house is on any given moment. If somebody needs dinner, they're going to come to dinner. I don't care. Um, I sacrifice sometimes my, um, desire to sit around and play Dragon Age every single night to <laughs> serve folks. Now that can tip into doormat land and we don't want to do that. Um, you are right. not the world's doormat, but radical hospitality means prioritizing things differently. Yes. I love that. And that is one of the things I learned about, I learned in my five years living there and I continue to learn and watching how my husband is just like, he just exists. Um, the tiny cultural differences between us. One of them is that. Mm -hmm. So I absolutely love that. Thank you for, uh, thank you for sharing that because that is, that is so much what we try to do in our household too. We love the fact that um, we always joke around about being, we live in a very rural area, mm -hmm. um, but we live between a small city and a larger city. Okay. And, um, and we're like the bathroom stop for our friends when they're driving from the, <laughs> from the small city to the bigger city. And we always, we always joke around about having the open door policy that people can always stop here to use the restroom because it is an hour drive between cities. And, uh, it is an important, you know, when you have little kids and <laughs> yeah, yeah, we know, live and now, um, about five minutes from an amusement park based on Sesame street. It's a water park called Sesame place. And so yeah. we all to everyone like, Hey, you ever want to bring your kids come here? You guys park the car at ours. We'll drive you down. It's two minutes. Like that's just kind Aww. of our, that's kind of our thing. Um, so we, we try to do it too. Um, and we are certainly suburban. I mean, certainly like proper, I live in Pawnee, Indiana, kind of like level of suburbia from Parks oh, and Rec. Um, yeah, yeah. I go to my homeowners association meetings and they could be sponsored by Sweetums. Like they are proper, I am proper suburbia. Um, <laughs> but I work in the city every day and I work in a part of the city that most people don't come to. Um, it happens to be a really, really disenfranchised part of the city and is the most um, economically um, disadvantaged part of the city and the under-resourced in the ways that the resources have been stripped from it. And I'm constantly like, come to my office, let's take a tour, we'll order pizza, come see this part of the city. Um, mm -hmm. It kind of exudes in everything I do. At least I hope, I try, I try. Yes, that's awesome. Well, I think just from what I've seen, I think you do a really great job of it. Oh, thanks. Um, so I think you've already covered some of this, but do you have any other extra little tidbits of advice of what you would say to someone who really might have this inkling starting to grow in their heart saying, I want to be more hospitable. Um, I want to open my heart. I want to open my home. I want to open my office or I want to open my Zoom room, but I'm nervous. I Maybe they struggle with being an introvert. Maybe they struggle with feeling like their house is too messy or they're too shy or um, they don't cook well enough. What do you have? What do you, do you have advice for people like that? I do. And the first thing is to realize that my standard is not necessarily yours. So if everything I just said gives you like Anjana, please don't do it. Um, <laughs> and so that's the first thing. Second thing is, yes, we all love really well cooked food, but you know what else everybody loves? Pizza. You know, who, you know where there is always pizza everywhere. So like I fell into the myth that hospitality meant Martha Stewart. That is a lie from the very damn pit of hell. Um, Jim, I will explain the Zoom room to you offline. Don't worry about it. Um, and um, I am, it's like an online, it's Skype, but better. Um, yes, that's the perfect way. Yes. It's Skype, but better. Anyway, um, I don't believe, I have no Martha Stewart bones in my body, much to my mother's chagrin. She tried very, very hard to raise me to be an organized, tidy person. I am instead a cyclone of chaos. <laughs> um, 
And I decided a long time ago that my stress level in keeping my house perfect for people I loved was ruining my experience of being present with those people. Mm-hmm. And if those people loved me and I loved those people and like the stumbling block was my messy house, they'd tell me that. Yes. Yeah. Like, and I've had, I have only ever had one friend be like, your, the level of clutter in your living room gives me hives. Can we meet somewhere else? And I'm like, sure. Or do you just want to give me about three hours notice and I'll clean it? <laughs> there you go. There you go. It doesn't bother yeah. me, but if it bothers you, I'll straighten. I just need to know. Um, yeah. And so it's kind of those tiny little things deciding, deciding that. Um, in terms of the hospitality of your heart, that is a much harder journey. Um, I'm a huge believer in therapy and that everyone should be in it during their lifetime. Literally every human on the planet. Me too. I say that all the time. (laughs) Um, because everyone should have the privilege of having somebody who is trained to listen well, listen to them for six to seven hours of their lives, which is the average, by the way, tenure of a therapeutic relationship. You're not committing to 40 years of therapy. You're committing to like 10 hours calm down you t- spend more time in the walking dead than you spend on therapeutic sources just sign up <laughs> crying out loud um, and if you are in a therapeutic relationship with a professional they can help you kind of excavate what hospitality means for you hmm. if you are ready to start taking those steps feel free to start small be brave with one person i would love to be that person and if you are on this call i know sarah would love to be that person for you Sign up for an online conversation if in-person is really stressful. Um, Commit to one thing that scares you and then find somebody to hold you accountable to it. And by the way, that one thing that that scares you could be remembering to set out placemats for dinner. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. That's okay. And a lot of times we really do overcomplicate it. Oh my God. Oh my God. I said, I say all the time, if you are Joanna Gaines and you love everything white and shiplap and beautiful and rose gold and minimalist, then your house should look like that. And I understand that it is stressful for you to be in my space. My house looks like Jen Hatmaker's mess of color. And I have like none of our furniture matches. I have blankets uh-huh. I picked up all over the world. I've got tchotchkes mm-hmm. from India next to things from our, my house is an explosion of comfort. Yeah. Awesome. Gives my, one of my best friends in the whole world is like mid-century modern mad men queen. My house is under hives. <laughs> and I know it. But you know what? Brittany and I love each other to the fierceness of our core. And we both get over it. Yeah. So, Very good. Yeah. Oh, and yes. And Jim just posted about thera- therapeutic options in the Catholic tradition being spiritual direction. And, and that's totally right. If you are in a congregational setting where there is spiritual direction offered to you, either Protestant, Catholic, Orthodox, Jew, Hindu, whatever, um, that could be a very, very healthy, that could be a very, very healthy thing, especially for our friends from Ireland for whom professional therapy is a little bit more of a logistical challenge for those of us in the U.S. and Canada. Mm-hmm. Fabulous. Yes. And, um, and one of the things that I just, um, as, as you were talking and, and I was remembering back when, back when I was in college, I, um, I actually hosted two of the older women from my church on my dorm room bed and I served them hot pockets from my microwave and it was such a holy experience. Yep. Like it was beautiful. So, you know, we really do ditch it on a pillow. Everybody loves pizza. Yes. And it, you know, it really was, it was just a really holy experience. And it was one of those moments that I'll never forget because it was just, um, it was authentic and it was what, it was what we needed. It was, um, that true connection. And I needed, I needed guidance from them. You know, my has, my, boyfriend at the time was just getting ready to propose to me and I I wanted all their their uh matrimonial wisdom you know and uh and so that was them mentoring me in in my space that I had to offer at that time so it was amazing the element I mean food is an elemental necessity in life and our choice as our choices are only how we consume it and whom we consume it with and so those are holy choices um what what the breaking of the bread with people bonds you in a specific way, whether you give into that or not, it's totally your call. But it yes. um, every every meal can be separate, can be a separate experience. Definition of 
everything is set apart. So everything is set apart if we make it a choice to be. Yes. I love that. I think I'm going to, um, I'm going to have to like make a can a, like a quote and, and we'll have to like, we'll have to do that for you. Cause that was beautiful. <laughs> like you. every meal can be set apart. I love that. <laughs> That's so beautiful. Um, so guys, does anyone have any questions for Kristen or myself as we kind of wrap this up? Because I just think there's, we covered so much goodness. There's just, hospitality is so rich and um you know i just think it's so brave and it is so good and um you know as part of my crew here i never want you guys to miss out on the courageous experience on the brave experience on the amazing experience that is hospitality so does anybody have any questions before we close out tonight all right. Well, um, Kristen, I'm going to give them just a few more seconds to close up. But can you um, can you share with us how people can find you um, if they're interested in learning more about you or Abby Research? Where can they find you? You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter, all under Abby Research. And Abby is spelled A-B-B-E-Y. Um, Perfect. And all the hashtags there are at Abby Research slash Abby Research. We kept it really simple because we get confused easily. Um, all right. And then our website is Abby-Research.com. Um, you can also feel yes. free to comment here in the in the um, to comments. That's comments. the word. Yep. Um, <laughs> here. And I'll be checking back in over the next couple of days to make sure that I don't miss anyone. Um, cause this is one of those things where this is like this really big thing I've been thinking about for 15 years and I'm not sure if it was easily digestible in a Facebook live. So I want, I'm available <laughs> for questions, um, and further discussion. I love talking about this. And so please, 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 please. Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for joining us tonight. And Kristen, thank you so much for joining. Oh, I, was an honor. I, thank you I'm just so honored. Oh my gosh. Like. Stop. I can't even thank Total you joy. enough. This was incredible. So, all right, guys, we'll have a fabulous Tuesday. It is my challenge to all of you to extend an invitation to some be blessed. It is amazing the relationships you can, you can foster. So, all happy, right, happy everyone have a great evening. Saturday, thank you. Bye-bye.